in this example, I want to go through Git and GitHub. And uh, the reason I want to do that is because we're moving into the phase of the course where we're going to talk about the CI CD pipeline. So CI CD is continuous integration and continuous delivery. And GitHub is going to play an important role in that process. So what's going to happen is we're going to write code on our local workstation, so on our development machine, and then we're going to push that code to GitHub. When we push that code to GitHub, that's going to start off our code pipeline. So it's going to start off that CI CD cycle. And in order for that kickoff process to happen, we have to know a little bit about Git and GitHub. So I'm logged into GitHub right now, and I have no repository. So this is, I've created an account and I've logged into GitHub, and right now I have no repositories. So what I want to do is I want to create a GitHub repository. So I can call this anything I want. So I'm going to call it Cloud for Developers. And I'm making it public, and I'm going to create the um, the repository as a public repository. There's also a git ignore file, so I can say which file should I ignore. And um, for now, we can kind of skip over that. It's basically what files do you not want to put into this repository. So um, our source code is going to um, have some artifacts that maybe we don't necessarily want to commit to source code. Uh, maybe we only want to keep the files that we've created as opposed to generated through um, some development ecosystem, but for now we're going to skip that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and create a repository. Okay, so um, when we create a repository, it gives us uh, a few additional details about how should we get started, and what I want to do is kind of walk you through some of these initial commands so that we're comfortable working with Git from a command line. Okay, so in order to demo this, what I want to do is I want to go out and create a directory on my desktop. So on my desktop, I'm going to create a new folder called um, Cloud for Developers. And this doesn't have to match. Um, we could call it anything we want. We can call it my Git demo. Okay, so that's that's, uh, I'm using an, an alternative name just so we can see that the code in this folder that's on my desktop does not have to match the folder name that I used for my repository. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to go out to a terminal. And there's graphical tools, but I, I always find that it's easier to work from a terminal. So I'm going to change into the my git demo directory. And then I'm going to use the command git init. So git is the command, and then I'm initializing a new repository. Okay, and it's creating a local repository. So basically what I'm saying is locally I have my files, but I also want to keep track of those files in source code management. So I, I always like to think of this as three different parts. So I have my local files, I have my local repository, and then I have my remote repository, which is going to be GitHub. And I can take my local files, commit those to the local repository. And then once I have them in my local repository, I can push them to my remote repository. So three different locations where your files are going to exist. OK, so right now, if I do a git status, there's no commits yet. So there's nothing to add or track or anything like that. There is no files there. So um, if you're more comfortable, we can come out to a graphical tool to create a file. OK, so I'm in Atom, and I want to add a project folder. And I'm going to add a project folder to that desktop folder. OK, so there it is. And right now, you can see that there's one hidden directory, which is .git. Uh, that's my local git repository. But what I want to do is I want to add a new file to this. Um, so I'm just going to call this my readme file. And then this is going to be hello from my first git github demo. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. OK, so I create that file. And now if I go back out to a terminal, 
what I can do is I can say I want to add that file to my source code repository. So it's a file, it's sitting on my desktop in that uh, my git demo directory, but it's not part of my source code repository right now. So what I can do is I can say git add readme and now if I do a git status so it tells me that there's a new file it knows there's this new file readme.md that needs to be committed okay so right now I've added that to my source code but it's not actually saved to my local repository it's not committed okay so what I can do is I can commit that file so I can do git commit and usually what I'll have is a message attached to it. So I'm gonna call it my first commit. Okay, so now it's committed to my local repository. And because it's in my local repository, that's great, but if I go out to GitHub, you'll see that I still don't have any files here. So it's just an empty repository, there's nothing here. Okay, so I, I don't have any files here. So what I want to do is I want that file to go out to GitHub. In order for that to happen, I have to basically let Git know what my remote repository is. So the way I'm going to do that, I do this one time for this application. I say git remote add. And then I have to give it a name, what I want to call that remote repository. So a lot of times you'll see documentation calling that remote repository origin. And I will typically use that convention, but this can be anything you want. So if I wanted to call this Cloud for Developers, so I'm adding a remote repository called Cloud for Developers, CFD, and then I have to give it a location, HTTPS, github.com. Uh, my repositories are all under Bewitkowski. And then I called this one in particular um, Cloud for Developers. Git. Okay, so now I've added that remote repository. So now my local Git repository knows about a remote Git repository called CFD that's located on GitHub. And what I can do it now is because I have a, a commit, I have a commit, and um, if I do a Git status, um, it's clean, there's nothing to commit. Uh, however, I have some local files that I want to push out to my remote repository. So the way I'm going to do that is with a git push. And I specify um, where I want to push to. And then which branch do I want to push to? Master is kind of like your production branch. I could have development branches and I could have phase branches and things like that. But for now, let's just assume that we're always working on the master branch and there's basically one repository that's going to hold all of our source code because that's going to make things easy. So I'm doing a git push. It eventually writes all of my objects. And now if I come back out to GitHub and I refresh this, what will happen is you'll see that my one file is here and it has my one commit message, hello from my first get github demo. Okay, so I'm able to push files out to github. Okay, so let's say I'm working along and I create um, an HTML file and a JavaScript file. So this is gonna be an HTML JavaScript application. Uh, so I go ahead and I say in my git demo, I'm gonna create an HTML file. So I'm building out a website. Um, the file's an HTML file. Git demo. And then I'll have an h1 tag. Hello world. Git demo. Okay, so this is my HTML file. I'll have an external reference to some JavaScript. Um, git demo.js. Here's my JavaScript file. Okay, and I can do anything I want in here, but uh, let's assume that I want to do some kind of onload event. So window.add event listener. 
load initialize. And then I'll have an init method equal to some function definition where I just log a message. Some dummy message. Okay, so we just have some JavaScript attached to um, our HTML file. Okay, so I know that I have two files that I need to add to my source code repository. And it's pretty easy to keep track of. I added an HTML file and I added a JavaScript file. Um, however, if I'm working along and I've added 10 or 15 files and I don't remember what I've modified and, you know, things are getting a little bit messy because I'm just kind of starting the application and I want to, you know, work quickly, I can do a couple of things. What I can do is I can say git add dot. And what that'll do is it'll add all of the files to source code within that directory. Okay, and then I can do a git commit with my message saying added initial files for my website. Uh, it looks like I have a typo. I have one too many M's. Okay, so it added those two files to my source code repository. And now what I wanna do is I wanna push those files out to GitHub. So again, the same command that I used before is gonna be that git push with my um, remote repository. So what I can do is hit the up arrow and look through my previous commands. So not commit, not the add, but this push where I'm pushing to cloud for developers on the master branch. So I'm gonna uh, push all of my locally committed changes which is my two new files, out to my remote repository, which is Cloud for Developers, sitting on GitHub. Okay, and now if I kick over to GitHub and refresh the page, you'll see that I have my two new files, and you can see that my message shows up in GitHub for those two specific files. Okay, so now GitHub's hosting my source code. Okay, so the reason why we're going through this, again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is this is gonna kick off our process, that CI-CD pipeline, that continuous integration and continuous delivery. What we ultimately want to happen is we want our source code to get pushed out to GitHub, GitHub to have a hook into our code pipeline that's on AWS, so that AWS gets notified saying, hey, there's new source code on the master branch, um, I want you to kick off that code pipeline to take the code and deploy it as needed out to AWS. So ultimately what we're building up to here, and this is just kind of a, a preview, is we want our source code managed through GitHub. We want an AWS code pipeline that will automatically take our code from GitHub, um, compile our, and, and we're going to use a, a React app, we're going to compile a React app it's gonna push that React app out to an S3 bucket so that our React app is hosted on S3. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the ultimate goal of where we're going, but we're gonna start here with GitHub. In our next um, video, we'll start to look at how do I create a, a simple React app and what are the components necessary because that's all gonna be part of the process of building the CI CD pipeline. Okay, so this is just a, an initial taste of Git and GitHub and how we're going to be working with Git and GitHub within our CI CD pipeline.